It's time for Life Engineering, processes that combine science, wisdom, and spirituality to build a life of alignment. Joining Dr. Pat is your host, Gabriella Embon, bringing you bi-weekly wisdom nuggets, your step-by-step guidance to build a life of no regrets. Stay tuned as they uncover powerful processes for you to realize your true potential. Are you ready for some magic wisdom? Life Engineering starts now. everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you here. I'm Dr. Pat. I get to join the most amazing Gabriella. This is extremely important because self-coaching, it's one of the things that is available and accessible to everyone. And in today's show, Gabriella is going to take us through the 12 key principles. And, And these principles are to help us create alignment. And we're going to talk about what that means. Gabriella, this is so important because so many times we stall and we think, oh, I'm defeated. But you're going to help us understand that there are principles to help us be in alignment and literally move through so many things, right? That's right. Thank you, Dr. Pat. Yes, and thank you for our listeners. And I want to say thank you for the messages that you send me, that our listeners send me about the episodes. They warm my heart. It's Anyway, they warm my heart. Um, so thank you very much. And um, so I was compelled to, because we've done 12 episodes and we have shared a lot of tools for self-coaching and where to start to create a life of no regrets. And I felt that at this point, it would be good to create a summary episode and to put all these principles in one list, right? Um, In one list that people can easily access and use what works for you because Here's what is important for me to say. These principles are not the absolute truth or the only way of creating, okay? This is how I create and what has worked for me. So the invitation here is not, of course, to um, take them as an absolute truth, but more to try them and test them and see if it works for you as well. Yeah. So... Yeah, let's get rolling because I love what you said. There are 12 of them, but they all work so beautifully together with each other. And I know you're going to touch on that. All right, tell us where we should start. Okay, I want to start with, uh, first of all, saying why is it important to to go over this is, where, as we said previously, you know, we are set for motion. We are here as builders. We're here to build a world, right? So we either get busy creating our best lives or we get busy fixing problems. For our brain, either way works. As long as the brain is busy, it's happy. So we, it's actually our choice because we have free will. We get to choose if we're going to get busy with growth challenges or deficiency or lack challenges. And that's why this is so important. So let's get started with the 12 principles. The first one, number one is always start with a vision, an intention. What is that you want to experience in life? Now, I know that that's not always very easy. Okay. I've I've been there when you say, I don't know what I want. Okay. But what we want to remember is that we all know how we want to feel and we all know what's important for us and we all know what we want to be remembered for. So if you are not clear yet, when you ask, what do I want? Then clearly don't ask that question anymore because it's going to keep you spiraling in that loop that I don't know. You want to ask different questions. When you don't have an answer, ask different questions. So different questions could be, What do I want to experience in life? How do I want to be remembered? What's important for me? What kind of impact do I feel compelled to offer? Right? So these are questions that could be a great alternative to what's my vision? What do I want? And if you don't see a vision for the long run, that's fine. Don't ask yourself where you want to be in five, 10 years. That can be, as we said, the brain sees the future you as a stranger. Simply ask yourself, where do I want to be in six months? Start yes. small. Always start small. Okay. Yes. Um, Great start- advice. Great advice because uh, I just want to say this real quick. Sometimes we look so far in the future, it overwhelms us and we never get going. That's right. That's right. And 
the, what's important is not to settle for confusion. And, you know, ask yourself, what is that I am clear about? Or what is that I am clear that I don't want? That's okay too. But don't, I'm confused. Okay, you're confused about what you want. What is that you are clear about? Start with where you're clear and that spotlight is going to get bigger and bigger and you're going to have more answers. I'll, I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, once I was launching a project and I was very clear about what I, the message that I want to put out there and how I want to impact. But I wasn't, I wasn't able to start. Something was holding me back from starting until I realized that the what was really clear to me. What I want was clear. What wasn't clear is how I want to do this. The how wasn't clear. So sometimes, okay, we say, okay, I don't know what I want. So allow yourself to separate the what from the how. You might know what you want, but you are not sure how you're going to get there or how to deliver that. I There was a topic I wanted to teach, but it was clear I don't want to teach an online course on that. But that's all I knew how to do. So I wasn't daring until I got really clear. Wait a second, the vision is still the same. I just don't want to do it the way I've been doing it so far. Once I got clear about that, oh my God, the windows opened, the sun came in. <laughs> um, let's move to the second one. Um, and the second one is be aware or get clear about what's the price of creating your vision. What is the price that you are willing to pay for that? Because there is an effort for to create anything. And I don't mean effort as hustling, but something needs to be done, right? So what's the price of doing this? Is it that I use my vacation money to take a course? Is it that uh, I don't go out every Friday with my friends to stay and study? So what's, right? what's the price that I'm willing to pay? And what's the price as we said in the previous episodes, that we are not willing to pay. Because when you get clear about the price you're willing to pay, okay, or what you're willing to go through or do to create that vision, and what you're not willing, I was not willing to be 50 years old when I started coaching, I'm there almost, I, I was not willing to say I'm 50 and now I need to restart. So Yes, I restarted when I was younger and the kids were young, but that was a price I was willing to pay because I didn't want to reinvent myself when I was older. Now, not that yeah. this is bad, it's just personal. It's what I wanted, right? It might work for other people. So when you get clear about that, then you won't complain, in other words. Yeah. And yeah. also it helps you commit because one thing is to be interested and the other thing is to be committed. And that's also important to be honest with yourself. When you're committed, you're willing to pay the price. Does it make sense? It makes sense because my decision to go back to school at age uh, 44 and, and go back to a long-term hall at school, I had to go through all of that. And uh, I got to tell you, there were moments like in that eight-year period where I thought, what am I doing? But you're right. We have to really commit. And then once you commit, you're over a giant hump and you have to remember what was my why. Right. But you're going to talk about that because you got more you got more secrets to share. That's right. What's your why? And, you know, it's like I'll give you the, the most beautiful and simple example is when you have a baby. Right. The price you're willing to pay is not to sleep at night. You know, it's temporarily right? But you're committed to do that. So yeah, you might complain, but you're committed, right? You knew that was the price and you're willing to pay that. So with your vision, right, it's the same. So let's take that vision and bring it down now with step number three. And is where do you want to see yourself in 90 days? Okay. I love big visions, but they have to be practical. And the only way to make a big vision practical is to bring it down to what's the next step. So where do I want to see myself in 90 days? And what's going to make a change? What's going to be a, a, a big significant deal for me? What's going to make the most amount of impact if in 90 days I am here? 
right? A game changer. What is that decision that if I am in 90 days in this place, that's going to be a, a game changer? Is it that in 90 days, I already have five clients? Is it that in 90 days, I solidify my business plan? What is it, right? So once you get clear about that, you go, okay, what skills do I need to acquire or develop in order to be there in 90 days? Yeah. So that's a, the third step is to get really practical, to bring your vision down to 90 days from now, what's going to make the most amount of difference if you're there that's going to propel you forward? Yeah. Let's move to number four. Okay, I think we're going to have to go fast. So what pilot can I design to test my vision? And we always say there to pilot, right? So yes, we have a vision, but we also need to remember that our brain is allergic to change. <laughs> so uh, a pilot is eating a piece of the cake before I buy the entire cake, which eases my brain into the process of creating this um, and minimizes the risk um, that your brain potentially see, right? So it's calming your brain, it's working with your brain and, re and minimizing the resistance that your brain might have about you going and doing something new. So always design a pilot. So I always tell my brain, I'm not launching a new product. I'm just testing on three people. <laughs> I'm not building a coaching business. I'm just, you know, working with a few people and charging them a little bit. So we, we, we ease the brain and then we just go and do our thing. The next thing you know, your brain goes, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> uh, number five is don't waste time seeking perfection. Rather than seeking perfection, uh, seek clarity and progress. Um, first of all, perfection is not always better, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, clients don't buy from you because you're perfect. <laughs> they buy from you because they resonate with you. And they might yeah. actually resonate if it's not very perfect. Yeah. Um, so rather seek clarity and progress. And of course, clarity is found along the path, not in the starting point. So again, as you heard me say several times, you don't need to figure it out to start. You just need to start to figure it out. Yeah. You say, I have no clue what to do. Let me start and figure it out. Yeah. I love that you're mentioning this because let's just mention one last thing. If you're seeking perfectionism, you're losing time in enacting what could be. That's right. That's so true. That's true. And you are keeping stuck. And you know what happens when you're stuck? Fear kicks in, stress kicks in, anxiety, not as a condition, kicks in. You start comparing with everybody else, right? Because you are inactive. You want to stop comparing, feeling jealous, being afraid, saying I'm stuck, just move. When we are in motion, we don't have time to compare mm -hmm. or feel fear. When I feel fear or that I have to compete, that means I'm not taking enough action. I see that as a sign that I'm not taking enough action. Okay, yeah. let's move to number six. I love this one. Redefine, we're going to have a few redefines. Redefine success. Um, the moment you dare, you already succeeded. That's how you want to look at success. The moment you dare, the moment you launch your pilot, the moment you made the first step, you already succeeded. The idea is to release ourselves from the need to see results to continue. We have a dependency on outcomes and results. And I understand how, that's how we were raised. You know, in school, you always get graded and, and it's how and value, uh, evaluated. So you want to release the dependency on that and put the effort and the progress and the growth as a priority because the real inspiration is always the journey and the growth along the way. Our job is to create the container to uphold those results that we, we desperately or dearly desire, okay? We don't need to see the results to have permission to continue. That's another thing, sometimes we start, we don't see results right away. And then we start hearing people telling us, maybe you should do something else. <laughs> maybe you should try this. Maybe you should quit. Maybe it's time to go back to a job. 
And you go, well, I don't need to see the results to have permission to continue, right? It's my vision that is giving me permission to continue is that I'm not willing to pay the price of regret that is giving me permission to continue. Okay. Yeah. The price of regret is so steep. We can't even put a number on it today. It's heavy. So, so heavy. Um, number seven, redefine failure. We redefine success. Let's redefine failure. Failure is letting a challenge or a situation that didn't go according to our plans or expectations to disempower us or to derail us or to make us retract, basically to ruin our future by creating fear, regret, or avoidance. But if we don't retract, build avoidance, uh, regret, or fear, and we use that as an opportunity to learn, then it's not a failure. It becomes a failure when it controls me. And I'll tell you today, a student said something so powerful to me, a student in the Philippines, actually, this morning. She said to me, um, there is life after failure. I just love that sentence. Her name is Michiko. Michiko said, there is life after failure. I was like, oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know um, why that's so powerful? Because you're taking it from people like you, like me, like this great student who probably did fail. And if you're any one of us, we've learned how to thrive now. There is life after what some people call failure, isn't there? Absolutely. And that's what's important to remember. That's what's important to remember. Uh, let's redefine more. So we redefine success, failure. Number eight is to redefine challenges because some people see challenges as punishments or signs that I'm not meant to be doing this, <laughs> right? Um, like everything going smoothly is the sign you're meant to be doing this. Then nobody will be doing anything, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Challenges are not punishments and they're not a sign that this is not for you. They're actually the opportunity first to exercise your creative power, right? To be creative, to solve them and to embrace responsibility. Is an opportunity to overcome these challenges by growing and acquiring the, the skills, the, the beliefs, the mindset you need to have to continue. So they are there as part of the path. They are not um, there to slow you down per se or to take you out of the path. They're there to help you get to that vision, right? Like, very much like a video game. They're always an opportunity for growth. And as we said in the previous episode, we want to embrace anti-fragility, which is the ability to grow after pressure rather than resilience, which is just going back and and, and practice yeah. that post-traumatic growth, right? Yeah. yeah. Look, any athlete you ever talk to, any reflection I've ever had on a sport that I play where I've lost a match, a big match by one point, ask me what part of the match I remember. I remember that one point so that I never make that mistake again. It's a learning, gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching, but boy, I learned more from that one point and, and people know that they can learn from this. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know why you remember that? Because you used it to empower you. Had it been easy and you'd even be unconscious of what you did, you wouldn't have remembered that. <laughs> but you grew out of it. Yeah, I did. That's why you remember. But isn't that what we're talking about is like, we could take a look at these things, Gabriella, and I know you're going to finish this up. But we could take a look at these things as moments. We can grieve in the moment of despair. But what we're saying is we need to redirect after that moment so that we can move up, right? You said it so well. Yes. It's our ability to course correct. It's what life is all about. When we uh, embrace and foster and become better at course correcting, right? We are deliberately becoming creators of our lives. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. 
So number nine, point number nine is about decisions. We want to now redefine good and bad decisions because we tend to judge decisions based on uh, the outcome, right? Like the quality of the outcome. If it was a good outcome, it means it was the right decision. Rather than do that, we want to redefine good decisions based on why we chose them and not the results they created. Mm. So all I'm saying is the quality of the outcome does not determine the quality of the decision. If we make decisions based on where we want to be, not based on where we are now, but where we want to be. If we make decisions from intention and not expectations, not to correct, right? We're not trying to solve a problem, creating another problem, then these are the right decisions. Mm. And if we make them with our heart, of course, they are the right decisions. Um, so that was number nine. And number 10 is choose courage over regret. And that goes back to the price we're willing to pay, right? Is the price rejection. Sometimes the price of building a coaching practice is rejection. Not everybody's going to say yes. Or building a coaching school is rejection. But um, there are also people that are going to say yes. So yes, there are the, the no's, but there are also the yes. And if I don't dare, because I'm afraid of the no's, I will also have zero yeses. Yeah. So courage is the moment, how we redefine courage is a moment when you choose to act despite the fear. And when you do that despite the fear, right? You are basically able to disconnect the thinking brain just for a moment and let the doing brain do what it knows how to do. And in that moment, you succeed. That's success. It's the daring. So it connects us to redefine success. And a choice that is made with courage is always a good choice. I mean, we know in our hearts when we're being fear-driven. And I have to tell you, I'm not saying that all fear-driven decisions aren't good. There are some decisions you make from fear. It's like running out of a burning building. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the fear that the mind will conjure up and create a story about, as opposed to the courage that comes from your heart. That's right. I think it's about uh, differentiating... Um danger and fear mm -hmm. i told uh, someone yesterday i said change doesn't equal uh danger um no sorry it was knowledge knowledge doesn't equal danger because somebody that couldn't ask questions uh so you know i think that when we make decisions from fear the fear we're talking about that is not danger then we're not exercising courage but sometimes the fear is to alert of danger and that's okay, right? We're not talking about that, right? So the difference mm -hmm. between fear and danger are, is, is really important. Now for mm -hmm. the brain, it's all the same, but then it's up to us to use our common sense logic and willpower to address that, tell our brain there's no danger in failing, actually. Mm -hmm. There's no danger in doing this uh, consultation and the client say no yeah um, and the next one is work on number 11 is work on your beliefs and mindset as we did last session yeah um, how important it is so here's the thing the, the actions are only 10 percent and miracles miracles happen when our inner resistance when our limiting beliefs equal zero now of course I, I don't know anybody that has zero limiting beliefs but let's just say about a particular situation when our inner resistance is very low and then we take the 10 percent actions right those 10 percent are more than enough to create results because we are in complete allowance of the divine to deliver that's what we call creating with ease and grace which is the most sweet, beautiful yeah. moment to experience, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> it is. 
It is. And what you're really telling us and helping us and walking us through, though, is you're helping us understand that we are a choice every minute. That's the punchline here. And that choice can bring us in alignment or out of alignment, correct? That's right. We are a choice with our actions, with our choice, with our choices, whether we take congruent choices or incongruent choices. And it doesn't matter what you do, but be aware that the energy of the choice equals the energy of the consequence. <laughs> so if life is not going according to the way you would like it to be, go back to the choices you made. And it doesn't really matter. It's not to dwell on the past. Okay? Um, like um, John Paul from uh, Paul Mitchell said, you can erase yesterday's newspaper, but what new choices can you make? Every day is an opportunity to make new choices okay. and um the the, not, the last point is take your inspiration seriously <laughs> i actually take my inspiration seriously don't wait to have it create it okay um don't wait to see the light at the end of the tunnel as we said be the light at the end of the tunnel and then you always be inspired if you don't feel inspired look for source of inspiration don't settle to live a life in which you are not inspired because your inspiration is igniting the spirit within you. It's your soul. You are meant to be inspired. If you don't feel inspired, your soul is not as ignited, then do something about it. <laughs> Whether it's walk on nature, listen to a podcast, read a book, whatever inspires you. Watch a YouTube video about the people that inspire you. I get inspired by builders, right? So it doesn't matter. You know what inspires you. And if you don't remember, go back to a moment mm -hmm. when you were your own inspiration, when you acted in a way you did not expect and you exert um, qualities that were and strengths that were inside you that you didn't know you had. That's your own inspiration. You are your own inspiration as well. I love it. Gabriella, how do people find out more? <clears throat> about you, about the Academy. Please give out some information and thank you so much for today. Uh, well, people can find us at coachingacademy.net. We are very excited and ready and getting ready because we are upgrading the life coaching manual for our cohort number 18, uh, starting in September 14. Um, so go to coachingacademy.net. If this inspires you, contact us. We will offer you more information so you can make an informed decision if this is it. in alignment with you or not. I love it. Thank you so much for everything, Gabriella. And for all of you out there, please listen to this again. Put them down on a piece of paper and know that every one of these is attainable. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you, Dr. Pat. Thank all right, you. everybody, let's take a short break. We'll see you next time. You have been listening to Life Engineering, processes that combine science, wisdom, and spirituality to create a life of alignment on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join host Gabriella Embon and Dr. Pat every first and third Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific for bi-weekly wisdom nuggets on how to create your perfect synergy between your mind, body, and spirit in order to realize your true potential. For more information, visit Gabriella at CoachingAcademy.net.